I sat down and, guys, I didn't know what I was going to say. What did you say? I'm, I'm sorry that I killed 20,000 babies. Sorry about that. I didn't know what to say. In 2009, we were building the largest, it's operating now, the largest abortion facility in the Western Hemisphere in Houston, Texas. And uh, I, I had a, an office in that, in that building that was going to be opened. And I found out in January that we were going to be performing abortions in the third trimester. But I, that was a problem for me because I believed that, you know, if, if a baby could survive on its own outside of the womb, then certainly that was not okay to take its life. It was viability for me. And one day I was reading a, a very scientific article in People Magazine, and <laughs> I learned about this baby who stopped growing at 20 weeks and six days. And she was born and she was healthy and now she's like 12 years old or I don't know. But anyway, and I thought, okay, well, now I've got to move my viability line back, right? Because it was at 24 weeks and now it's at 20 weeks and six days. And in January, they announced to us we were going to be doing abortions in the third trimester. And that was problematic for me. And then uh, April of 2009, I was awarded Planned Parenthood's Employee of the Year for 2008. And that was really exciting for me. I know you're all very proud of me. Thank you. And... Um, <laughs> And I got to go to their annual uh, fundraiser, and I got to sit at the table with Hillary Clinton. Don't be jealous. And um, <laughs> August of 2009, I had a meeting with my supervisor, and we were going over my budget for the upcoming fiscal year. And she told me that, um, that they were imposing an abortion clinic quota. And by the way, we were going to be expected to double the amount of abortions that we had provided the previous year. And that didn't make sense to me because at Planned Parenthood, we are about preventing the need for abortion. We are about reducing the number of abortions. So why in the world would we be doubling this abortion quota? It doesn't make any sense. So I said something to my supervisor and she looked at me and she laughed and she said, why would we reduce the abortion number, Abby? That's how we make our money. And I thought, well, okay, this is, this is an interesting turn of events for me. I don't know where I'm going to go from here, but I've been thinking about it for a, about a month. And uh, September of 2009, we had a visiting physician come in from out of town. And he uh, had a private practice abortion facility in Austin. And uh, he was explaining to me one time at the clinic that inside of his own private practice abortion facility that he used an ultrasound because he was explaining, uh, shockingly enough, that it's actually safer if a doctor can see what he's doing while he's performing surgery. And I'd never thought about this. I just want to make it clear. I'm not a doctor. I'm not a nurse. I'm not even a medical assistant. I have no medical authority or education. I'm a licensed therapist. So if you're having a crummy day, we can talk about it. But if you need any sort of medical procedure, I'm really not your gal. But inside of the abortion industry, they don't care. You just have to be willing and sit through an in-house training session, and then they set you loose to perform invasive medical procedures on women. And I had gone through that training. So the only thing I knew about abortion was what Planned Parenthood had told me. I only knew their protocols. Me, as a non-medical staff person and the director of that clinic, supervised doctors. I supervise nurses. I mean, it doesn't even make sense. But, you know, they don't care about you being medically certified. They just need you to follow a protocol. And really, if you are medically certified and you're running a clinic, you may start having questions, and they don't want that. Just do what you're told, read the protocol, follow the procedure. 
And so I never, I, I didn't even know that they did abortions using ultrasound guidance. That was totally new to me. He told me that, you know, Planned Parenthood didn't do it because it takes a little bit of extra time when you're using an ultrasound during the abortion. Uh, our goal at Planned Parenthood was to get a woman on the table and off the table in five minutes. And so to introduce an ultrasound during that would take an extra, you know, three to five minutes. And, you know, we were trying to do 30 to 50 abortions a day. So, you know, you just don't have that extra three to five minutes per patient. But this doctor told me that it would be interesting for me to see it. It would be a good learning opportunity, educational opportunity for me. And so he said if time permitted that he would show me what this looked like. And that time did come. And I was uh, asked to come into the room. And my job during the abortion was to hold the ultrasound probe on the woman's abdomen so the doctor could, in his words, visualize his target. Again, not medically certified, but I'm doing an ultrasound. I had done them lots of times. So doing an ultrasound, we do the measurement, 13 weeks gestation. Now at 13 weeks, are there arms and legs? Yeah. Fingers and toes? Yeah. Heartbeat? Yeah. Brain waves? Yeah. Internal organs? Yeah. yeah, everything's there. Outside the womb, the baby's about this big. And we can even tell if it's a boy or a girl at that point. Now I knew that. I knew what the aftermath of abortion looked like because I had been a POC technician. What does POC stand for? Products of conception. What is that? That's the baby, right? You can say baby inside of the abortion clinics. We said POC. And inside of every abortion clinic across the country, there is someone tasked to be the POC technician. And our job is to take everything that's suctioned out of the uterus, dump it into a glass baking dish, reassemble the parts to ensure that we got everything during the abortion. I did that. I, I can't really explain to you how I was able to do that job and not be bothered. I mean, I have no, I have no explanation for it, except to say that when you are living in that sort of sin... When you are experiencing that sort of evil, see, the, the evil of abortion, it's, it's actually very tangible. See, I could see that evil when I piece those parts back together, right? I could, I could feel it when I would manipulate the parts of those babies. Abortion has a very distinct smell. I could smell it. And when evil that real infiltrates your heart and your head, the only thing I can say is that it can literally blind you to the truth that's right in front of you. And so... I was standing there looking at the ultrasound and feeling a little nervous because I didn't know what I was going to see, but I knew one thing was for sure, and that was that this baby, this fetus, whatever, was not going to feel anything. Now, how did I know that? Because Planned Parenthood sent me a memo about it, and the memo was entitled Answers to Tough Questions. The most frequently asked question I got from women seeking an abortion was, will my baby feel this? And Planned Parenthood knew that we had to have a very clever answer. And our answer was no, the fetus has no sensory development or does not feel anything for 28 weeks. Now, do you believe that? No. no. Well, I did. I knew better. I knew it was a lie. I mean, I had to believe the lie because the truth was really inconvenient for me. You know why 28 weeks? Because Planned Parenthood doesn't do abortions past 28 weeks. They just picked a number that would be financially smart for them. And so I was standing there, I was reminding myself, I was, I was reciting the scripted answer over and over again in my head, and I watched as the, the cannula, the suction tube, the suction wasn't turned on yet, I watched it go into the woman's uterus, and 
I watched it go right up next to the side of this little boy, and as it touched his side, he jumped. And he began flailing his arms and legs as if he was trying to move away from the abortion instrument, but there was nowhere for him to go. I saw pieces of this child being suctioned into the tube one at a time. And you know on an x-ray, bones are white? You know, like cartilage is white on an x-ray? The very last thing I saw on that ultrasound screen was this little white, perfectly formed backbone. And I saw it twirling around inside the mother's womb and then it finally went into the tube and the screen was just black. And I knew that the abortion was complete. Abortion is the only procedure I can think of where its success is determined by taking the life of another person. And that was bad. All of that was bad. But that wasn't the worst part. The worst part was that when I had the opportunity to intervene, I just stood there and I did nothing. I mean, I remember wanting to, to, to sit this woman up and say, look, look what is happening to your baby. I didn't. I just stood there and I watched. It took me a week to leave. I can assure you I did not want to leave my job at Planned Parenthood. I tried really hard to make what I had seen okay in my mind. I made a lot of money. We were enjoying this lifestyle because of the money that I received from Planned Parenthood. I thought, what are we going to do? How are we going to do it? I did not want to leave. But finally, on a Monday morning, I went to work, and I, I felt physically ill to be there. I just felt nauseous to even drive into work. And I was, I was sitting at my desk, and I was, I was praying, probably really for the first time in eight years. I mean, don't get me wrong, I went to church every Sunday that I worked inside of Planned Parenthood, but I wasn't really talking to God because I didn't want to hear what he had to say. So I didn't really have a communication with God, but it looked great for us in the pro-choice movement if we had people who proclaimed to be Christians and went to church. So that's why I kept going. But I remember I was praying probably for the first time in a long time. And I sat there and I was just praying, like, God, you know, give me somebody to go to. I don't know who to talk to about it. My parents were on vacation. And, and I kept feeling like God was telling me to go and talk to these crazy anti-choicers who were outside of my clinic. But that Monday, I knew I couldn't stay there anymore. I was watching women walk out of our clinic with little brown bags. And I knew that they were going home to do the abortion pill. And I thought, well, I'm, I'm still here. I'm still doing it. I said I didn't want to do it anymore. I'm still here. So I got in my car and I ran out the back door. I got in my car and uh, I, I could have walked to their office because it was conveniently located next door. But um, <laughs> I thought that would look suspicious. So I got in my car and drove the 50 yards. And... Um, <laughs> and gave him a call and I said hi I'm outside in your parking lot and I would like to know if you have a back entrance and they said can you hold please <laughs> and uh, anyway they finally got back on the phone and they let me in and it was so funny it was like a movie they opened the door and there's like three of them standing there like this <laughs> and so I went in and I, I sat down and guys I didn't know what I was gonna say what did you say? I'm, I'm sorry that I killed 20,000 babies. Sorry about that. I didn't know what to say. And I, I was 
crying so hard I couldn't even say anything. Finally, the only thing that I could even get out of my mouth was that I have been wrong and you have been right. And now I need your help. I went back to work that day. It was, I don't know, probably 2 o'clock in the afternoon. I wrote up a resignation letter, and I started, to, <laughs> I started to move eight years of stuff out of my office quietly into my car. Three weeks later, it was Halloween. I was served papers by Planned Parenthood. Uh, they were taking me to court. The, you know, the judge threw it out because it was stupid. And uh, they threw it out, and... The thing was that when Planned Parenthood, when they took me to court, they sent out uh, a press release to the Associated Press. And it, the, the, the press release said, you know, we are very sorry and we're very regretful that we're having to take our former director to court. We are concerned about confidentiality and we're so concerned about it. Here's her cell phone number just in case you want to talk to her. <laughs> Not kidding. And so that night, the night that I got served and they sent out that press release, I got a phone call from a local reporter. And, uh, and uh, she said, you know, I'd like, I got this press release. I didn't even know the press release had been sent out. And she said, I, you know, I'd love to talk to you about it. And I said, okay. So it was funny because she had always interviewed me while I worked in Planned Parenthood. So now it was like this change. And so, um, so we sat down and she asked me, you know, why'd you leave? And I told her about the ultrasound, everything. And she was like, whoa, that press release got picked up by the local news. That local news story got picked up by Fox News, ABC, CNN. And so thank you, Planned Parenthood, for giving me the opportunity to publicly speak against you in the way that I do. Um, My end goal is to end abortion in this country. It's not just about closing abortion clinics. It's about getting into the hearts and minds of people who believe this is acceptable behavior in our society. It's about getting to our young people and saying, this is why you're pro-life. I was raised in a pro-life home, but I didn't know what that meant. I just said it because my parents said it. So when I was approached by a woman at Planned Parenthood in college and she started talking to me about all these wonderful things Planned Parenthood did, I didn't know any different. Because it was here, but it wasn't here. And I was so easily manipulated because I was so naive. I think about Jude and I think, oh my gosh, what a miracle it is that we have him because the abortion industry targets babies like him because he is African-American. He is a minority. And as sad as it is, the pro-life movement targets babies like him because he is conceived in rape. And I just think how special it is that his mother courageously chose life for him.